Hi, welcome back to Events Academy. This is the first segment of the second module, Electronics, and today we'll be going over the basics of electronics. More specifically, we'll go over how circuits work and go over some basic components. Then we'll introduce you to Syncercad Circuits, which is a platform for you to create your own circuits, and practice by making a LED light up. Before we start, my name is Johnny and I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. I'm a rising third year at the University of Michigan studying Industrial and Operations Engineering. On my free time, I like to cycle on my bike and learn about robotics. I taught in La Nuestra Señora de Reconciliación in 2019 and I helped develop curriculums. Before we get into electronics, we should know a little bit about electrical energy. It's a specific form of energy that involves a charge, and it's needed to run a circuit. In your physics class or your science class, you may have learned about Ohm's law, which describes the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. And this is important, and we'll see an example of how this works out in a demonstration. If you want to learn more about how electricity works, a video will be linked in the description to learn more. There are two important rules in order for circuits to work. First, the circuits must be closed so that the current may freely flow throughout it. Secondly, circuits must have a power source and a ground. A battery is a really common power source for circuits. On the left, we have a schematic view of a circuit, and on the right, we have schematic symbols for the ground and battery slash power, respectively. Circuits can be small or large, ranging from how we power our lights to how large electrical grids are, and must flow completely throughout the system in order to work. If we unscrewed a bolt, or cut off a wire on a power line, the circuit will be open and therefore no longer work. Circuits isn't just about power. Here are some basic components that are in our everyday lives whether we realize it or not. On the top left, we have a resistor, which adds resistance to our current in order to add variance to the voltage or current. In the middle, we have a capacitor, which is able to store electrical energy or charge. An LED, which is on the top right, is a visual indicator or a light. On the bottom left, we have a toggle switch, which is able to turn a circuit on or off or otherwise open the loop or close the loop. In the bottom middle, we have a button, which is a temporary on and or off switch. A finally, finally, we have a transistor, which is able to control the flow of currents. We'll use some of these in our circuits. Before we get to assembling our circuits, let's talk about breadboards. Usually with circuits, we need to solder our circuitry in order to permanently assemble our circuits. However, we can use something called a breadboard, which is shown on the left, in order to make our connections. This is easy for configurations and management of components and wiring. It also has this rail system um, which we'll talk about, that reduces the need for manual connections. And then the final thing is that this is really great for prototyping, which is why we'll use it a lot. So how does a breadboard work? A breadboard is based off of mutual connections. So the power rails, which are found on the top and bottom, are connected. We typically use the red or positive rail as our voltage source, or 5 volts connection, and the black or negative rail as our ground. The middle rail connections are where we place our components, like our LEDs, push buttons, and resistors. The middle rail connections are also mutually shared, so be sure not to mix up any wirings in the same rail. I know that was a lot, so we'll be practicing and building our own virtual circuits through Tinkercad circuits. So just follow along, we'll have this link in the description as well. Alright, so once you log into Tinkercad, go to the Circuits tab, then press Create New Circuit. So this is what Tinkercad Circuits looks like. I'm first going to change the title on the top. So this will be Introduction to Electronics. On the left, we have the working environment, and on the right, we have the components library. If you want to learn about more about the components, you can go onto this tab, which has a description of all of them. For dragging components to the left, for example, an LED, it will appear in the working environment. We are able to rotate a component or delete it 
undo an action, or redo an action. We are also able to run code, but we'll talk about this at another time. Finally, we're able to simulate or power our circuit by pressing the simulation button. Since we don't have a circuit yet, it won't do anything as of now. So let's build a simple circuit. As I mentioned before, we first need a power source. So let's use a battery. This battery has a positive and negative end. Next, we'll use a light bulb. And we'll connect these two together using wires. I'll change the wire colors to make it consistent. Typically, we use red to represent positive and black to represent negative. Once we simulate it, it will light up. So this is an example of a simple circuit. Now let's introduce a resistor. So I will rotate it first. And let's remove this really quickly. So what do you think should happen? Well, since the voltage is at a constant 9 volts, we are increasing the resistance, and the current should increase according to Ohm's law. So once we simulate it, the light should be reduced. Now let's make a light switch, just like the one we have in our homes. Let's look for a switch. This is called a dip switch and reconnecting it again. And once we connect it and simulate it again, it should work just like our homes. So starting off, this dip switch is off which is why the light bulb is not lighting up. And once we turn it on, the light should be on. Of course, like the electricity in our homes is much more complex than what we have right here because we have something called circuit breakers. But this is a very good example of how circuitry works. This switch is turning or closing the loop such that the light can now light up. 